Now we're ready to talk about voltage. And let's think back about our earlier example. We had a large negatively charged object fixed in space and there were these two points, point A and point B. And those two points are the key right here. Uh, we imagined a charge at point A and the charge is naturally pulled to the left. So if we want to move it over here to point B, we have to exert a force. And when we push from A to B, we're exerting a force through a distance. So we're doing work, or another way to say it is that we're expending energy. And the energy we expend goes into potential energy. It's stored as electrical potential energy. And the charge ends up here at point B. And at that point, it has more potential energy than it had at point A. Now imagine moving multiple charges from A to B. For each charge we move, there's a change in potential energy. And it makes sense to speak of the difference in potential energy per charge. The difference in potential energy per charge. And that's the important concept. There's a change in potential energy for each charge moved. So these two points, A and B, are two different points. And they're not just different geometrically. They're not just at different locations. But there's something different about them electrically. A charge at one point will have a different potential energy than it will have at the other point. And no matter how much charge we move from point A to point B, each coulomb of charge will undergo the same change in potential energy. And that's the difference in potential energy per charge between those two points. And that phrase, difference in potential energy per charge, is sometimes abbreviated as simply potential difference. And that's a common term. That term potential difference is just a shorthand way of saying this, the difference in potential energy per charge. So saying that there's a potential difference between those two points just means that a, that a charge at one point will have a different potential energy than it will at the other point. And that different difference in potential energy will be measured in joules per coulomb. How much difference in energy joules per charge. Now this is the same thing as, um, as lifting masses. Imagine uh, a floor down here, and here's a tabletop. And say there's some bricks down here. And we want to lift them up onto the table. So we pick a brick up and we sit it on the table. And we pick another one up and sit it up there. Each brick that we lift gains some potential energy. So there's a, a difference in potential energy up at the top and down at the bottom. Those two different locations have a, are, are different gravitationally. Down here we're talking about gravitational potential energy. And you can say, well, how many joules does it take to lift the bricks up there? Well, it depends on how many bricks we lift. One thing we know is that there will be a certain change in potential energy per kilogram of mass lifted. So we can think of the difference in potential energy per mass, or how much change in potential energy per kilogram. That's the same concept electrically. Just like we could lift a whole bunch of masses up to the top of this table, and for each mass lifted, there's a change in potential energy. We could lift a whole bunch of charges from point A to point B. And for each charge moved, for each coulomb of charge moved, there's a certain change in potential energy. Now think about the units here. If we're, if we're moving charge and the charges are gaining potential energy, there's a difference in potential energy, that'll be in joules, per charge. And charge will be in coulombs. And that unit, joules per coulomb, describes the difference between those two points. And one joule per coulomb is equal to one volt. And that's what a volt is. It's a joule per coulomb. And it's abbreviated just with a capital V, one volt. So if you take one, one coulomb of charge and move it from A to B, and doing so requires one joule of energy, then we say the potential difference between points A and B is one volt. Now this might be more clear with an everyday example. So let's think about something that we're familiar with. Think about a toaster, for example. So here's the electric outlet. And we plug the cord into the electric outlet. And here's a toaster over here.
Okay, it looks something like that. And we, we plug this in, and so there's a wires running. There's really two wires, remember. One goes into one side and one into the other. And even though they're wrapped up in a single uh, piece of plastic, they're two separate wires and are insulated and insulated from each other. And when, when we plug in the toaster and turn it on, electrons flow out of one side of the electric outlet and flow along this wire and go through the toaster and, and they produce heat in the toaster and then they come back along the other wire and go back into the other side of the electric outlet. Now a typical household electric outlet in the United States is 120 volts. And you are familiar with the term volts there. 120 volts just means 120 joules per coulomb because a volt is a joule per coulomb. So imagine charge flowing out of this wire. Imagine one coulomb of charge flowing along the wire through the toaster and then back through the other wire. Well, that joule, that, that coulomb of charge would lose 120 joules of energy in the process. When these electrons flow, they're going from a point of higher potential energy to a point of lower potential energy. And the power company provides power to your house in that way. On one side of this electric outlet, the electrons have more potential energy than they have at the other. Those are like the two points A and B in our earlier diagram. There is something different electrically about those two points. A charge at one of those points has more energy than a charge at the other. And just as in, in the world of gravity, things tend to fall down naturally all by themselves, things fall to points of lower energy. Electrically, things fall to positions of lower electrical energy. So the charge naturally flows from the point of high potential energy to the point of low potential energy. And, and they flow through the toaster and they lose potential energy in the process and in this case the potential energy becomes heat. And what we're saying when we say it's 120 volts, we're saying that that's 120 joules per coulomb. Every coulomb of charge that goes from one side to the other loses 120 joules of energy. 120 joules of energy per coulomb. And you hear the term voltage. The term voltage means the same thing as potential difference. Those two terms are just synonymous and what they mean is the difference in potential energy per charge. Now let's look at this equation or this statement that we had earlier. We said that one volt is equal to one joule per coulomb. We can make that into an equation and the equation would be this. Voltage is equal to energy over charge. Okay, this is the equation. Up above here, this is the same concept, just expressed in terms of the units. Voltage is measured in volts, and the energy here is measured in joules, and the charge is measured in coulombs. So voltage is energy over charge. And we might abbreviate these. Voltage is commonly abbreviated with a capital V, and I'm just going to write out energy right now for energy and charge is often abbreviated with a Q, either capital Q or a lowercase q. I'm not going to use E for energy because we've already used a capital E for electric field and a little e for the charge on the electron. So I'm just going to write out the word energy right now to avoid any ambiguity. But that's an important equation. Voltage is energy over charge. It's a simple equation, but it describes an idea that can be fairly difficult conceptually. Voltage, I don't think, is necessarily all that easy to grasp on, on, on your first, especially the first time you hear it explained. But if you can remember that it's energy per charge, and we're talking about potential energy, and remember that voltage always applies between two points, because you're talking about the difference in potential energy from one point to another. So when you're dealing with voltage, you're always dealing with two points, and it's always related to energy, and specifically it's energy per charge.